Welcome everybody to the Rally Cry Podcast. My name is Angel. And my name is Tyler. And you guys are here because you want to learn, you want to grow, you don't want to worry about the past anymore because you want to work on your future. The only way you're going to work on your future is if you work on the moment, the now. That's what's really important. And if you guys haven't followed us, follow us, please. And also like whatever episode that you like. And if this episode is going to be one that you like, I think that's going to be the case. You can follow us on the Rally Cry dot podcast on instagram and today we're going to be doing something a little bit different i know um there was one time uh we did uh a, a pretty much a review on the case the johnny depp case and breaking it down about how she was kind of just lying about it and you know that was definitely a case that you might want to look into if you don't know about it so um today we're going to be talking about how kim kardashian is man of the year on gq and so i've been seeing a lot on social media a lot of people are saying why is there a woman as a uh, man of the year and especially with so much biological things that's been coming up and these conversations about men and women and is for some reason like tyler i'm pretty sure you could agree with because we'd be having conversations like why is it where we're hearing so many people compare each other, right? Like, uh, I'm a man, and or and you can't compare me with this, and you know, as a woman, oh, you can't compare with this. And it's like, yeah, we can't compare, and comparison is already the thief of joy. So why we keep doing it? You know, I I think because we're so privileged, we somehow, some way, somebody wants to find a new reason to be the next topic of a conversation, and that's not taking anything away from Kim Kardashian. I just think that. Like, I don't know, like, Angel, like, do you have any information on, like, what she did, like, that could have gotten her to be the man of the year? Um, so there was a little bit that I got. I think that, you know, there is confusion of it. So it, it is still interesting, you know, in my perspective, it would be definitely, okay, why would there be a woman on man of the year? It does say man of the year. Mm-hmm. If anything, just put her woman of the year. Regardless of what she does, if it's a uh, very bold thing for you to do you can still be considered woman of the year so um right here there was uh, a forum on yahoo it's almost like a reddit right but someone that does their research um is saying how she's been kim uh kim kardashian man of the year and so it says that after her expanding her multi-billion dollar skims empire to include menswear she also launched a partnership with the nba to become an official underwear of the league um, as Skim's co-founder, Jens Grande, if I'm saying that correct, she explained that Kim is the Michael Jordan of the influencer generation. Stop. Many 19-year-olds who have never watched Jordan play don't watch play basketball themselves, but they wear Jordans every day. So who's Bro, to say for her? No, Angel, real quick. Hold on. We got to stop real quick. So, like, I didn't say right. it. <laughs> like, I know you didn't say it, but we got to, like, slow down the horse real quick because – so she just started this, right? She, the new empire, Skims Empire, just came out in 2023, and there's already statements saying that she's the Michael Jordan of, of brandware. Like uh, you just, you just made a deal uh, with NBA, and like you already get that title. Like you, and then you're the official underwear for the NBA. Underwear, okay. Underwear is important. That's cool. I mean, <laughs> want to if you want to go commando, that's cool too. But I mean. But I don't know that gets you that. the title because everybody wears Jordans, but people know Jordan and they watch his highlights and it's like, okay, he looks cool and he has a uh, history representing his brand. So like, even if you didn't watch basketball, there's enough to see that, okay, this is why people like him. Yeah. I mean, it also does say here, you know, other people that was uh nominee for man of the year in 23. So I know talking about how I don't know why you know it is her excuse me her co-founder so of course she's gonna kind of say something that is kind of gassing her I guess however I can see why she says that I don't agree I don't agree though it's just the fact that you know Kim Kardashian has been like if you say Kim Kardashian everybody know who Kim Kardashian is especially in the generation now um with you know women all everyone every woman knows who kim kardashian is she's like the face of beauty if anything right 
Um, and that's that's kind of just what it is. I mean, I don't know why, but hey, you know, she's she doesn't need to be all that, right? But it does say here for um, other people like Travis Scott, Tom Ford, and Jacob Eldori. El Lordi, El Lordi, El Lordi, El Lordi, No, nah, you messed me up. Uh, El <laughs> Lordi, yeah, no. So they also get received it. It's just the fact that, of course, I think it was kind of discriminating how Kim Kardashian was Man of the Year, and you're seeing her like with a bag of Cheetos. Like, okay, you could be Man of the Year, and you could put any form of representation, and if you're gonna be dressing like a man, right? Because it's man of the year and you kind of just want to have your fun with it. Why Why is there Cheetos? You know what I mean? If anything, I think Doritos is better. But not. Nah, but I'm really trying to say it's just the fact that you see how we can make that out of a joke. So it's just if you're going to be man of the year, is it almost like a joke that you have a bag of chips? Because I don't know. That kind of looks sloppy. You know what I mean? Regardless. It's just it doesn't it doesn't seem right. It's almost like very subtle and very indirect. So it's not saying anything about men, but it's like if you're trying to represent as man of the year, although you're a woman and you're trying to dress like a man, then what else do you have around in that photo shoot that represents as a man since you're trying to represent yourself as the man? You know, I, I love how you bring that up because the way I look at it, like, you know, this is a photo shoot that we're talking about. So, like, you yeah. have a multitude of props that you could choose between. and it's a bag of chips and you're looking at your fingers and as far as like you know and i'm not this is probably looking deep into it right so it's like okay so you're eating chips like there could have been any other representation that's better for that at least for man of the year so like why not represent your brand or like let's say you even have a, a designed outfit that's representing your brand and says skims on it and it could, it could be anything like right and that's because that's why she got it because of what she did with the nba um being able to make a, a brand for men that they could also buy. So it's not just women that support her. Now men can support her. And uh, speaking of that, TMZ, we're all familiar with it. TMZ, even though they uh, they have some fabricated, or I won't say fabricated, exaggerated uh, reactions, I think that some of the information that they found online was interesting because apparently more than half of the nominees, there was a total of 20 nominees for the man of the year. and mm more than half about 11 of the nominees were women so now we're, we got to take into the account okay so not only was she chosen to be man of the year for the gq cover but also why is it that there's less men nominees compared to women and since when were the nominees pr predominantly more of the opposite sex because if that's the case then we need to think about how many men could have gotten women of the year in the past and why wasn't that brought up? And I don't think that likelihood is even a conversation because I don't think that's ever happened before. Yeah, and I don't think it will even be where it, it's acceptable, right? I think that, you know, there's going to be so many opinions and so many perspectives and so many excuses to why, you know, she's man of the year. Although it's it's weird how... With certain roles, it's like the double standard of when a woman is able to, well, a woman is able to do something that a man would do, right? And it's okay. But if a man were to do something that a woman would do, it's not okay. They look at the man being like weak, but when they see a woman do something a man would do, she's looked that strong. So it's just like okay, when a woman does what a woman does, it looks as it's normal. Oh, we don't even pay attention to it. And if a man does what a man does, oh, we don't even pay attention to it. But we try to pay so much attention about what a woman does that what a man should be doing. And I'm being very vague here. I'm not specifically pointing it out in anything. However, it's just the fact that if it was in the context where, you know, there was woman of the year and there's a man on there, on there, what would that really say? What what is that? really bringing to society, you know, and what is that really trying to prime society to or condition, right? Because right now we're talking about it like that's not normal. That's not, that shouldn't be the case. And it's weird that she is, right? But then there's forums that kind of tries to back it up and say why she's man of the year. However, what it is, is taking away the masculinity that we could be having as men, because we're trying to say, oh, you know, a, a woman is still be able to, you know, 
be a provider and stuff like that and all these things. It's like, yes, okay, maybe, yes, okay, she can, she could, maybe she would. But <laughs> it's just the fact that it's taken away. Like, it's not saying that we have to categorize and it's also to say that we're we're not the same. We're, we're just not the same. We're not biologically the same. Um, we can't, we're not even the same to the way that we think. Our dialects are different. The way we talk, our definition is different, right? All things are different. And we all try to compare one another that, oh, yeah, I can do what you can do. Not necessarily true. So it's just to say that if a woman is a woman, let her be woman of the year, not be man of the year. You know, that's just my opinion because you got to think about the small, the small things. Like after a while, what are we going to do? Just accept that what? a woman is man of the year and then a man is on woman of the year. That doesn't even make sense. It, like saying it doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense. And I could say that for me, I mean, I agree with you. I think that it, it kind of takes away and it's almost like a distraction. You know, we have so many things that are taken away from the true value of like what an experience should be. And it makes someone question like, okay, so if she's man of the year, then what about the men that, you know, that we're making an example because there's already not a lot of male role models that the new generation that's going to be coming after us, that are going to have somebody to look up to. So now it's only emphasizing on the fact that there's a lack of masculinity in the environment. And if that's the case, yeah. and, it, and it starts small. So we're not trying to make this into a big thing. Like now we're going to have a war because Kim Kardashian is on the cover of GQ. But we're saying like when a teenager is seeing this or a young adult that's aspiring into their 20s, they're seeing this. So then it's like, mm -hmm. dang, so if I'm not doing as good as Kim Kardashian, then what am I doing? So do I need to sell, uh, sell a clothing line to women so I could be the next big thing and be on the cover of the man of the year or maybe even woman of the year? So is it just that anybody could fit the role? Because if that's the case, then, you know, what's the point of titling it man of the year, woman of the year? I think even, right. I, I even love how you were bringing up that, uh, the dialect, because everybody has a different understanding. Like we could be having the same conversation, but we have two different um, understandings of the meaning behind what we're saying. Mm -hmm. So uh, you don't, I don't think anybody wants to get lost in sight of what's truly the message of this, but I think at, at least moving forward, like uh, more research could have been done or even like more appreciation. Cause I'm sure that there's guys that are in Hollywood that are celebrities that are doing something good for the community. I just think that's uh, being underlooked, especially that, you know, 11 women out of 20, not, I mean, yeah, 11 women out of 20 nominees, like, you know, compared to that with guys, I mean, it almost makes the guys look like they weren't really doing much, at least in this mm. past. You know what I mean? So, yeah, I, I definitely I was thinking that, too. And it's just to say what's what's really man enough. Right. Mm. Are you trying to say that, you know, men that are actually men, they're not man enough to be man of the year? And it's not to say, you know, Travis Scott, Tom and the other guy, um, he they weren't on there as well. Um, but it's just to say that, you know, even if you put in a mixture of other people that are nominated for it, it looks like the most one that stand out, though, was Kim Kardashian. Mm -hmm. And of course, because it's like, why is she man of the year? That makes no sense. But we got to look at how society is like the direction that they're going. Right. Biologically, we're trying to uh, attack ourselves on, you know, what is OK, what isn't OK. And we're having this cultural di disaster on what our identity is and what is fair and what feels right. And it's just a matter of, you know, knowing that having this kind of context is just demasculing men in a way. Very subtle, very subtle. You know, there, there's no there's no actual thing that's going to say, yeah, we're doing that. Because there's not even anything that says that they'll do that towards women. There's no uh, discrimination that would be put on, like, verbally. But they can do it behind on a picture, right? A picture says a thousand words, right? And it's just to say that this here is saying a thousand words. And it's not to be over-exaggerated on it because it's just questioning. It's kind of like contemplating and thinking like huh what does that really mean though you know what i mean and regardless of what they say about what she's done for a business and what she's implemented and then again it's only been a year this year that she's really did it and that's great you know i'm glad that she's able to you know bring a lot of 
exposure to her brand. And it's great that, you know, there's also not a lot of uh, women that can even get that high, right? And, you know, she tries to maintain her image as best as she can as as many times as she's been humiliated. You know, she's still doing what she got to do. All the things that she's went through, she she's had a, a, a sex tape on there out and blurted out all these things that's happened. We know these things, right? And but she's still doing what she got to do. She got business going on and she's still trying to become a businesswoman. And that's what matters the most. Right. So it's not to come at Kim Kardashian herself. It's more so just regardless if it was any woman, even a woman we don't know. Of course, if it was a woman we don't know, it would be really like, who did who that? But it, it's really just to say, like, don't don't put a woman on man of the year. It's just it just doesn't make sense, as we already stated. And so we're still trying to wrap our heads around that. And if you guys are listening, I, I want you guys to, like, let us know. What do you think? And do you think is maybe we're over-exaggerating? Do you think we're overthinking it? Do you think it does have something to do with society? Is it uh, – are, are we coming to an end of how we look at each other? Is it, like, a man against woman kind of thing now? Because it's almost to seem like that. Like, you see all these uh, these things on the Internet talking about men and women and identity and all these things, and it's just like, why, why are we fighting so much? It's – what are we fighting for? If that's the case, what we just want, we want power. Is that what it is? Because, you know, one thing's for sure. We're looked at as a man that have more power over a woman, but it's just like, you know, to a degree where a man should be having power, but in a way that it still delivers respect. You know what I mean? There is able to give back to the community. And that is one thing Kim Kardashian did. She's giving back to community. She signed a contract with NBA for underwear and she has a whole segment for men as well. So she's doing something good. I just don't agree for her to be on man of the year. She could still be doing everything that she's supposed to without having that title of man. I I completely agree. And I also want to chime in. I, I believe that we're moving further away from appreciating what is there and what we are capable of as individuals, man or woman or man and woman. Mm. I think that it's also, you know, I the, there's a narrative that's being developed and I think it's been, yeah. It's been in the process for quite a while. I could say even probably after since COVID or maybe a little bit after COVID. Mm. And I think that's what's causing such a disruption and such a separation now that like it seems like there's a different there's a segregation within our own community. So now we have to be careful with what we say, how we talk, and also like what what our beliefs are. Because now what used to be original beliefs where everybody wasn't on the same page about things now there's so many other different ideas it almost seems like we can't sit down and have a conversation like we have right. to be stacked against each other and almost fight like it's like you said why are we fighting you know and it's even to the same point that we said in the in, a, in previous episodes you know why fight and why fight for a relationship you know you if that person respects you and if this person is willing to communicate you're not fighting for a relationship you're investing the time to work on it so it it changes the whole dynamic when we go from appreciating, acknowledging, respecting, and all these other things to now let's uh, let's be oblivious. Let's change the narrative. Oh, I just want to rebel because that's what it seems like too. Let's rebel a little bit. Let's get people a little bit worked up, so that way we could you know get a conversation going rather than actually having a genuine conversation and just speaking about what is and what isn't. Yeah, I I agree. I think. You know, it's definitely something to talk about, and we're talking about it right now, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, I don't think it's it's a thing that we should be so fixated on. It is something to question, though, and taking consideration on why is that the case. But I think uh, me and Tyler wanted to do something different with you guys because, you know, we can talk about mental health and all these things, but the one thing that we talk about a lot of times is being aware of it. And when you're aware of it, then that's how you're able to, you know, break things down, figure out what's the problem, re regulate yourself. And that's emotionally, physically, mentally, you know, those are all three different um, segments within, you know, the way you process things. And uh, yeah, I think, you know, these were our thoughts as far as like, why is she man of the year for GQ? Um, I think it does question, you know, what is man enough? And, uh, you know, where is society going with the men that are, you know, leading the generation as well? There's a lot of great men out there. And, uh, you know, I could name a couple. And, you know, 
I guess it's just a matter of if there's no big significance where there's a majority of people talking about it, that's where it just doesn't stand out. And since Kim Kardashian is a person that stands out, you know, I guess they just wanted to nominate her as one of the nominees for Man of the Year. But it still goes back to question, like Tyler said, that they had about a handful of women that was in line to be nominee for man of the year so it's still still it's the question like why is that the selection what what is the purpose behind it and is that just trying to get society all riled up and um you know go against each other because then we could be like oh yeah i got man of the year i'm a woman yeah what is that what what can you do about that huh and then the guys are just gonna be like oh oh, how dare you oh darn darn you know what i mean so i think it's just it's just to bother us right so um, I don't know if there's anything else you want to say, Tyler, before we go, but that's pretty much all that I really got to say for it. I mean, hey, all all I could really say about like this is like, you know, don't be afraid to have a conversation. Um, I think with body language, being able to see body language and how someone responds, you'll be able to, you could tell right away if you have that kind of conversation with them. And, you know, don't don't waste your time trying to have a conversation with somebody like our goal isn't to change your perspective. It's just to be able to agree to disagree and be yeah. content with whatever the outcome is. And if it can't be peaceful, then toodaloo. Like, don't waste your time. Just say, I appreciate the conversation and go about your day. Don't don't let yourself get um, enveloped with somebody's negativity or somebody's negative way of thinking and perceiving things. So keep doing you. Appreciate yourself. Love yourself. And at the end of the day, keep being you. Yep, absolutely. So, yeah, guys, if you like what we were talking about, if there's anything you want to talk about, you know, definitely leave us a like because that does help us out. And, you know, it's definitely a conversation that could be sensitive because everybody has their own perspective. So what is your perspective? Let us know. You can follow us on Instagram at the podcast, and make sure you follow us on your favorite podcast platform. Let your cousin, your sister, your brother, your auntie, your mama, and your dad, and your cats and your dogs, and let them know that the rally cry is here to talk about what's important and make sure that we can grow together, talk together, because that's what it's all about. Let's communicate. Let's grow. We hope you guys love this segment. It's definitely something that we're going to try to get into more and talk about things. So if there's something you want us to talk about, let us know. And until next time, make sure you just, what was that? Uh, I was going to say, think clearly, think clearly. Think clearly, take your time, be easy, peace. Peace.